Bernard Brown is a magnificent dancer, dedicated activist, and educator who was born and raised in Los Angeles. He is one of Home LA's dance artists we've worked with the most, so we are so excited to feature him in our final Friday's programming, where we explore the artists who have shaped Home LA, dance, and the places we call home. And so wanting to bring that to life, uh, this idea of going to any lengths, looking at how Black bodies are still seen as a threat or treated as a threat in the United States, what does it mean for a 21st century body to inhabit this story in this particular site? Box is a very interesting piece. Uh, the protagonist, Henry Box Brown, was an enslaved man in Richmond, Virginia, who mailed himself audaciously from enslavement to freedom in Philadelphia. He had a co-conspirator, a white ne'er-do-well from town, who he paid $66, which at that time in 1849, that was a huge amount of money, especially for a person who was not uh, a wage earner. And so I felt it was important to enliven this history, especially looking at the historical context of Los Angeles and its ideas around who was able to live where. Victoria Park uh, is a gated community in South Los Angeles even though it is now known as a place where people of color can live. Historically, it did not work out that way. There were extreme racial covenants here in Los Angeles, keeping folks of color, particularly Black people, out of living in neighborhoods such as Lamert Park, Victoria Park, and even downtown Los Angeles. And so being a part of this site-specific process was really interesting and important to me. Um, it, grounded this work in a sense of realism, and that was essential for this work. In addition to this idea of abstraction and universality, I know a lot of dance scholars are not really uh, into this idea of universalism, but I, there's something really important about his audacious search for uh, his own freedom and agency. So much so, he burned his hand with uh, sulfuric acid to get out of work as part of his scheme to, to enact his, uh, his liberation. Understanding that history, I felt it was important to do this dance in this home, in this backyard. The home, it reminded me of colonial architecture and being in nature, which I, which was rem reminiscent of what I believe uh, this plantation would have been like in Virginia, having a large tree behind me and dust at my feet um, was quite inspirational. And I felt it was impactful for the narrative to be enlivened because of the context, the, the situation and the landscape that Box was created in through Home LA. Home LA has been quite an incubator for me. I have made a number of works uh, through this platform and I am quite grateful. Uh, the first work was kind of a false start at uh, El Sereno, um, but it has had uh, the threads of that work continues to live throughout other works that I've made since then. Um, but Victoria Park, that location, set me on a path uh, to great success. Um, Box was made there in 2016, which led to, uh, from that site-specific work, it led to a theatrical version that sort of stripped bare the prop and the, the sort of dance theater element with the dust. The singing uh, remained. And so we worked to, to make this work something that was uh, it could be traveled. So it was filmed as part of my thesis work at UCLA, and uh, it has had many lives. It has been performed 25 times, uh, both here in the US and most recently through video because of the pandemic uh, in Seoul, South Korea as part of a festival there. I am super grateful for Home LA for providing this place where folks can experiment 
and dig into the creative process, having space and allocated time, dedicated time to do this type of work is invaluable, especially in Los Angeles when uh, rehearsal space is a premium. Box was very much influenced by the location. And so I keep those the traces of that as I perform this work in various spaces like New York City, um, in Phoenix, in Chicago, uh, in Sacramento, right? In multiple venues across Los Angeles, because that is a part of the architecture of the work, right? Where it lives and how it begins, akin to liberation, right? You cannot divorce yourself from what got you to where you are. And so I take a piece of Home LA with me whenever I perform this work. I'm influenced by uh, my own experience uh, as a Black queer person um, in Los Angeles, in America generally. Um, also my experience uh, as a performing artist with various companies, specifically the Washington Dance Theater um, and its impact on communities. Lula Washington sort of discovered me. Uh, I was a young, <laughs> naive dancing person at the age of 12. I had just started dancing maybe a month before I met her um, at 32nd Street, USC Visual and Performing Arts Magnet. She sort of swooped me up and brought me into her care. And at the age of 12, I began training intensely at her school, which was then on Adams, just west of La Brea. It continues to be a home for me. The institution is now 41 years old. I am also 41 years old. I just added myself. Um, and so I feel very much attached to this place. I've gone from student dancer to youth ensemble member to apprentice with the touring company, ultimately ending as a principal dancer, assistant to the director. And now I'm acting in a consultant coach, uh, mentor capacity, and it brings me great joy to continue to be connected to this institution. Um, I feel that's important because I learned so much about how to be a human, um, not be driven by ego, um, how to create community that isn't based on capitalism, but community care and how we can uplift each other regardless of race, uh, gender expression, sexual expression, any of those things uh, fall behind uh, humanity. And so uh, my guiding principles were learned through my family, my grandmother, and also through my dance family at Lula Washington Dance Theater. They continue to be uh, a beacon of how an institution can be informed by and can influence the community that they are in. And so I know when I am supporting the arts and artists that I am supporting the best of humanity. With that, um, I, I felt it important to make work that was specifically uh, pointed at what I considered ills of society, um, ways that society is unjust, or ways in which I think the arts can impact a, a visioning of the future of how we can be better citizens and community members to each other. And so in 2014, uh, as a call to action, I created BB Moves, uh, a social justice dance theater company. And we have been making work for the past seven years. As the primary choreographer for the company, I cannot divorce myself from my experiences, as I've said before. And with that in mind, how do I lay bare these, these things, uh, as well as bring in folks so it's not just me waxing poetic to myself. So it's about creating a culture and a community that um, is on board with visioning and actively engaging with our society through the medium that is dance. I think that this work is really impactful and, you know, modeling after Lula Washington, who was modeled after Alvin Ailey, who was modeled after Catherine Dunham. I see my work in this lineage of uh, dance artists who are more than that, 
right? They are human beings that are part of this social fabric that is our global community and lead, they lead with empathy and integrity. Not having these models as a young person or knowing that I needed to see these models and then finding it with folks that I've met at Lula Washington, at Alvin Ailey, at Dance Theater of Harlem, here in Los Angeles, um, seeing the impact that it's had on me, I want to provide that sort of um, beacon for others as well. By doing this, I provide other folks uh, an opportunity to see themselves in places that they may not have seen before. And so in addition to the advocacy work that the company does, the activism work that I, active, that I engage in, um, I think it's important to continue to show up in places where folks like me may not necessarily see themselves. So as a professor of dance, <laughs> um, I'm always thinking about intervention and pedag pedagogical interventions um, that go beyond the physical artistic practice. And so the work that I make um, tends to have um, this educational component, which I find um, quite interesting and intriguing, right? How do I continue to grow as, as an individual and also provide an opportunity for others to grow and learn more about the society in which we live? There is no judgment. Thinking about the work threat, um, it was made in an academic space, but it was also made at a time where, similar to where we are in this moment, this cultural moment where it feels like there's a spike in police brutality against people of color. That moment in 2014, um, it sank um, to the pit, to the bottom of my heart. And so I created this work. Um, it was very like agitating um, to gather people in a circle. Um, strangers, some of them, to each other, definitely strangers to me, and to Don't perform worry. this work that is asking who is a threat. I offer them these, these epithets, uh, these derogatory statements that they are asked to, to hurl at me, while at the same time, the rest of the witnesses are there and it implicates them, which is a question about greater society. We can watch it, we can videotape these things, but what are we doing? Um, and so it is a call to action, making folks potentially uncomfortable about what they're seeing and hearing. Yeah, it, 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 it was a violation of the law. 
But it doesn't require for you to pull out a gun. It's not a threat. At least you can use your sense. Come on. It's one man talking to another man. Eliminate the gun or the bag. You're a man. You're a man. You're a man behind that bag. Be like a man. That's a coward pointing a gun at me. I am standing right here, defenseless. I am not doing anything, what about? deputy. I am not going to do anything. What There's about? no reason why I have two guns pointing at me. There is what none. About? I am not what doing about? anything. I am a law abiding citizen. I serve in the United States Army. Okay, I am scared for my freaking what life about? right now. I got two guns pointing at me. I got two guns pointing at me for nothing. I am standing right here. This is a violation of my rights. Okay? A violation of my rights. And Lord rebuke you. Lord rebuke you for having for giving you that power and you abusing it. What do I act like? The Lord rebuke both of you. I have done nothing wrong. And I understand you're backing your buddy up. Because I would too. But there is no reason why a gun should be pointed at me. I am not a threat to you. I am shaking you. I'm about to cry to you. I'm just crying to you right now. That's all I'm doing. I am not doing anything. I am crying. You got two guns pointed at me. I am freaking scared. I have an old car. There's no reason. There's no reason. No reason for this. What am I? No, I am not gonna walk this way. Hey, we put the guns down and, I, and I'll cooperate. I've not committed a crime. I have yet to commit a crime. I haven't committed a crime. I you know I have no weapon. There is no reason to pull anything on me. None. I am not a threat. In the sound, we hear uh, a man pleading to the police who have drawn a gun on him. He's on the ground pleading for his life. It can be read that I am that, that person. Again, this idea of universality, right? Understanding um, voice theory, he sounds not like a black man, but we can understand, we can relate that he is me and I am him and we are him. It could happen to any of us. And so what are we doing to care for our community members? This work sort of lives in the academic space, but it can also happen on the street corner, right? And seeing someone in dire need, what do we do? How do we care for our fellow persons, our fellow humans? How are we showing up for ourselves, right? Because we're all implicated in police brutality and this sort of militarization that's happening or has happened across our nation. What are we doing to, to find another way to care for each other because this one isn't working if people are dying at the hands of the people that should be protecting us? I hope to provide these educational, visceral, and artistic experiences throughout um, my, my time on this planet as an artist.